Welcome to Obrew. I'm Craig Morris and I like beer, but I prefer the unique flavors and aromas of the many craft beers now available. In this series, I will be in search of Ohio's finest beers, with Ohio ranking fifth in craft beer production and already close to 300 breweries and new ones popping up all the time, we have a lot of beer to drink. Today, we'll be visiting the Hoodletown Brewing Company, located in a very unique building at 424 West 3rd Street in Dover. The Hoodletown Brewing Company was founded by Mike Poland and Eric Kinsey. They opened September 1st of 2018. Even though it's a very new brewery, it has tons of character, and their beers taste like they've been in business for years. In this episode, we'll talk to Carrie and Eric Kinsey about how the brewery came about, and Eric will talk to us about some of the beers that they offer. Then we'll talk to brewmaster Mike Schwartzwelder and how he got his start in brewing. Finally, we will talk to the clientele and see what they think of the Hoodletown Brewing Company. Welcome to Obrew, and on this segment, joining me are the Kinseys, Eric and Carrie, and they are from Hoodletown Brewery, and it's located here, and we're gonna call it the Warehouse District of Dover. And we'd like to welcome you both to uh, today's program. Thank you. Thank you. We're glad to have you. Um, Hoodletown, name, where did it come from? Could you give us a little insight on that? Well, when, we were trying to decide on the name of the brewery. Um, we sat down with all of us, the, all the partners, and we wanted a name that was um, specific to Dover and um, was, was a fun name, kind of a catchy name. And we were trying to, we talked about where we had gathered before, where we thought um, of being with friends, and um, the name Hoodletown came up because in an area in Dover, back in the days, people would gather and have bonfires and drink a couple beers and be with their friends and um, just reminisce about things, about the past and about what's gonna happen in their future. Let's talk about the building that you guys purchased here. I mean, what's some of the history behind this building? Okay, so um, we bought the building two years ago in October and did some research on you know, where it was, how it started. And what we found out was that there was a company next door called the Hanna Furnace Company that owned this building and this was their machine shop. Uh, we're assuming for machining some of the castings or forgings that they would produce. And then from there, it was sold to Redhead Oil and Gas for their distribution center. So they would get bulk oil in and and make it into quartz barrels, whatever, and send it to their retail stations. After that, uh, you know, a few different companies owned it and just used it for storage. And it became pretty run down over the years. So it was, it was pretty, uh, uh, it was pretty nice or fun to like renovate it and bring it back to life. Um, you know, really. The windows and some of that stuff is there still some original stuff oh, yeah, that the, you reused or yeah, recycled this, yeah still the uh, original f window frames we took them out completely reconditioned them um and of course you know the structure we didn't do anything to the structure other than clean it up you know we had to put in a couple beams in the back to uh shore some things up but for the most part it was just you know sandblast it clean it up, put in new concrete. Yeah, all the ceilings are original and yeah, we kept everything we could that was original. Mm -hmm. We were talking before about, you know, some of the stuff that's, that's inside here. And you said a gentleman from Strasburg made some of the tables and have you kept a lot of the stuff inside here, like kind of local? Yeah, all the, I mean, all our tables and our, the, the bar and our flight boxes are all made from um, a, a local guy that's um, from Strasburg. His name's Dave Demuth. And um, the, we had other people locally who helped us with like the stairs and the welding and everything like that. Eric and Mike did 
most of the work in here other than like the plumbing and you know and things like that but um, yeah everything was done by local people and a lot of the things were purchased by local companies and when you have a lot of friends you probably have a lot of supervisors <laughs> we, we had people stopping in almost every weekend checking it out Seals. seeing how we were coming along so yeah or they'd pitch in for you know an hour or two or you know help jackhammer the concrete out of the building or you know help carry things up or down so that's awesome labor there you got to take care yeah yeah take advantage of that when you get the opportunity i'm sure yeah we really appreciated wow. friends and family wow. their help yeah a lot of good friends helping out you see uh people here now more than you've probably seen them in a long a long time i mean it's been kind of maybe a center place where you guys can you know have family and friends congregate oh yeah yeah we see especially we see his parents more than we've seen them because they come and have a pizza and have a beer and it's it's nice to see them often and then we see friends that we haven't seen since high school um they've popped in and and it's it's pretty neat you know and then you see your friends that you see a lot off more often every day but then they come in here too well, this is a very very beautiful facility and some of the stuff that uh, you're planning on doing down the road i know it's brand new and you guys just started in september yes this past september so um you know what what kind of things do you see in the future here we definitely um, want to have a patio here this summer um, to, to sit outside and I think that's very important for the business and um, and then we would like to distribute the beer at some point so we're looking into that um, also we don't currently sell wine or any other alcohol but we would like to get the permit to, to to add wine for people who come in and would prefer a glass of wine over over a, a, a cup of beer or a glass of beer um, but yeah, and when eventually we, did, we, we have a kitchen started and eventually we would like to maybe start serving some food out of our own kitchen. You've been having food trucks and that type of thing? Yeah, we've been having food trucks with, which have been really, really great for us. And then we um, are partnering with Penza's Pizza and Sammy Sue's Barbecue and they'll bring the food. You call from your table. We, we're not involved in the process at all and, and they'll bring the food right to your table. So it's almost like it's coming out of our kitchen and they're pretty quick. It's been a really good a really good partnership with them. Now, do you book any private gatherings like birthday parties, anniversaries, or anything like that? Yeah, yeah we've had um, a wedding shower and we've had a couple Christmas parties already and some birthday parties. Um, we have some company parties coming into the, the following year with cus bringing customers in. So, yeah, we are booking private private parties. All right. Do you want to talk about beers now? Because I'm actually really getting thirsty. <laughs> Sure. All right, my favorite time is the beer tasting time. And uh, Eric, why don't you shed a little light on some of these beers okay. that you have here at Hoosel Town. All right, so most of our beers are named after another one of our local hangouts when we were growing up. Uh, so we've got our two IPAs here. This is the High Wall IPA. Um, it was a some people call it the cliffs. We would go out, hang out there, and jump off of the, the cliffs down into the strip mines and stuff. Um, so this is our uh, more of an American IPA. Um, our Dundee Falls is a New England IPA. Um, kind of becoming more popular here in, in Ohio and, and the eastern area uh, as of late in Ohio. Uh, this one here, I believe, is our our milk stout, uh, black snake stout. Um, and then we have our point porter. So, so you got a pretty good, and these aren't the only beers you have. You, no, no. You can see behind me, there is a lot more beers on tap here at Hoodle Town. So, yeah. So we have uh, uh, a Winfield wheat beer, a wheat beer on tap, as well as our. Um, Hoodle Hill Ale. Oh, man, that first one's pretty good. <laughs> nice IPA. Who's your brewmaster? Um, our brewmaster is Mike Schwartzwelder. Uh, he was brewing beer for, I think, 15 years uh, prior to us uh, 
meeting Mike and, and asking him to, to work with us. So as far as uh, popularity wise goes with your beer, what would, would you mm -hmm. say your number one right out of the shoot? Yes, so our, our top two sellers are the Hoodle Hill and the Winfield Wheat. Um, but this New England IPA is uh, probably right there in third place, I would say. Okay, and a lot of these beers pair well with Penzo's Pizza. Yeah, oh yeah. And Sammy Sue's Barbecue. A lot, a lot of, a lot of uh, pizza and barbecue going down here for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, we have our seasonal beers. Like right now, we have uh, a it's more of a dark Christmas ale, and then we have uh, more of a traditional Christmas ale coming out uh, next week. So when you dis when you uh, when you're talking distribution and that type of thing, are you thinking just plain distribution in kegs, or you know six barrels and half barrels, or are you talking yeah. maybe bottles, cans? Initially, we're going to see how some kegs go, maybe some of the local uh, establishments and then hopefully get into cans. Now, do you do growler fills? Yes, yes, we do growler fills, absolutely. Do you have just one size of growlers? Or? Uh, yeah, we have 64 ounce growlers for sale here, and then customers can bring in their growler, we'll fill it for them. Okay. I noticed you have some mugs behind the taps here. Mm -hmm. Can you yes. tell us a little bit about that and what, what they stand for? Yes, yeah, so we offer, uh, a membership into our mug club. It's an annual membership. Uh, you purchase it, you get a mug assigned to you, you get your number, and when you come in to drink, you get at least a 20 ounce pour instead of a 16 ounce pour, which you would know if you were not a member. Um, right now, our membership is full. We've sold all of our memberships for the year. And uh, you also get a member t shirt and we're going to plan two member events for the year. All right, joining me right now in the brew house is Mike Schwartzwelder, the head brewer here at Hoodletown Brewing Company in Dover, Ohio. Mike, welcome to the program today. Yep. Good to see you. Yep. Nice talking to you here. All right, uh, let's get started. You want to just give us kind of a rundown of the process that you use to make beer here? Basically, it all starts with the water, um, water in the grains. Um, we heat our water up to a specific temperature depending on the recipe that we're going for. Um, we'll mix uh, that water, a partial amount of that water with the grains um, in the mash tun and let those grains steep for an hour. Most of the time, it's about an hour. Um, once that's done, we start to transfer that liquid out of the mash tun into the boil kettle. Um, we'll use the other remaining half of the water that we have in, in our hot liquor tank to sparge the grains in the mash tun and rinse the rest of the sugars out. Um, once that's empty, we'll bring all the total volume of our um, boil kettle up to boil and uh, let that boil for an hour. Um, Depending on what recipe it is, it, it gets a certain amount of hops at certain times. It's it's all varying on that. As far as your grains go, do you guys mill your own stuff? Yeah, you? all our grains come unmilled. We do mill our own grains uh, in the back. Um, it's uh, it's better for a smaller brewery like this because you're not you're not using them as fast, and uh, the grains that are milled they can tend to you know get a little. Uh, stale so they're better if you can get them unmilled and use them as you need them so, so you have fresh beer yeah 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 so after we get uh, our uh, volume boiled down and ready to go we uh, run it through uh, basically a giant radiator it's called a heat exchanger um it's it's got a jacket on the outside of it and and the beer runs through the inside of that and it's uh, cooled with groundwater um It'll come out of that heat exchanger and go directly into one of the fermenters. Uh, we pitch our yeast and uh, let it go, depending on the recipe. It, you know, goes two weeks, could go three weeks or, or a month if it's a lager. Um, take it out of there when it's done and put it in our bright tank. Uh, we use that to carbonate all the beer. Uh, once that's 
once the beer is carbonated, then we keg it out of there and, and serve it. Okay. Yeah, that's basically it as far as the process goes. There's a lot of different things in, in between there, differences in the recipes. and. So what you're saying is if it's a lager, it's a certain amount of time. If it's yeah, a lager, it's a certain amount of lagers time. take longer. I mean, your, your typical grain to glass beer, uh, like a, just a, a light beer like a cream ale, is usually no more than two weeks. At the most, you should have that in a keg by then. Cream ales are making a comeback. Huh? Well, yeah, I don't know about that, but they, they do all right here. So, I mean, uh, everybody seems to like it. Uh, but this area it seems to be more of a, uh, a light beer drinking area. Um, a little more softer on yeah, the palate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we sell a fair amount of all the styles across the board, but a good bit of it's uh, wheat beers and blondes and cream ales and stuff like that so what's the first beer that you guys brewed here at Little Town? uh it was um american amber ale was the first one that we brewed here and um, it was you know trial and error first time i've ever used any of the equipment um this particular equipment so it was you know it took us way longer than it should have but it, it worked out uh, made a good beer as far as like your background in, in brewing beer did it just start out as a hobby yeah or more, more or less it was just uh, somebody else it was just a hobby that uh, a couple friends had gotten into and uh, they went up to the uh, the beer store in Akron there and um, just bought a beer kit and it uh, it just turned into not for all of us but it, it turned into quite a bit more than what I ever anticipated it was going to when I first started started making beer um, so it's been a wild trip, that's for sure, and, and you know, it's, it's took years to learn what you do and what you don't do, and I'm still learning, too, so, I mean, that's, you, you don't know it all, ever. So you still make some mistakes. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And when you do make mistakes, they you, get named, right? Yeah, they, they get named, yep, yeah. and, uh, you know. You just call them a beer, and... You gotta, you gotta just uh, make sure you take good notes and, you know, follow the process, you know, properly, and... Learn, learn from what you did do or what you didn't do and and go go from there with the next time you, you try to try to make that beer again that's, that's the only way you can do it all right well as far as i know it's a very very good product here at Hoodle town mike thanks for your time today we appreciate it here at old brew so as promised we said we were going to talk to some of the patrons here at Hoodle town brewing company and joining me now is margaret and Margaret is a Mug Club member here at Hoodle Town. Yes. What number mug do you have, Margaret? Number 90. Number 90? Why do you have 90? Because that's what I'm going to be my next birthday. All right. <laughs> How did, what do you think of the beer here at Hoodle Town? Well, I have a kind I like, which they all know, because I'm not too crazy for the dark, but I like the... You like the other beers? I like the other beers. And, right. and I'm a beer drinker, so... And I heard through the grapevine that you uh, check this place out frequently on the weekends. Oh yeah, uh, once a week I've been here. So if people come in on the weekends, look for Margaret oh, yeah. and ask her what she's drinking because well, it's probably the best beer. No, they, they all know what I drink. They all right. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to talk to a few more people here at Hoodle Town and uh, joining me this time. You're going to be surprised, but I actually know this lady. She was my art teacher in high school. and. She's visiting from North Carolina. North Carolina. All right. So they're enjoying some libation here and some food from Sammy Sue's. Stuff like this you can uh, you can order in and get it here at Hoodle Town. What do you think of the beers? Delicious. Delicious. Every beer. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So and and where you, where you guys live currently? I mean, they've got some pretty good beers there too. Oh yes. Beer, Comparable to beer trail uh, right right out of Wilmington that has a lot of different IPAs. Different Comparable it's to right this there. place. Oh yeah, and but yeah. this Penzo's is really pizza? nicer. You can't go wrong. Can't get Penzo's yeah. pizza. That's right, and he loves pizza. Yeah. All right, all right. Poodle Town has many many beers, but this is their Whoville 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 beer. And they also have some pretty awesome food here. But joining me right now is uh, 
some people from up the road a ways from Strasburg. <laughs> Stras Vegas. Stras Vegas. <laughs> Ralph and Sherry Shy, friends of mine. And um, well, when you own a business, you like to get away once in a while, and this is probably a cool place for you guys to escape. It is. And, and yeah. get out of get out of Dodge, so to say. Yes. So tell us. What do you think of the beers? Obviously, you've been oh. here more than once, right? Oh yeah, yeah. This is this is kind of our little getaway. Um, we like to travel around and do the local breweries, and we love the local wineries too. Don't get me wrong, but the breweries, we we love doing the breweries. There's something about breweries, and it's about the people, and we like to connect with that. So we come down here on our day off or when we get a night off, like tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and we kind sneak of out. impromptu, hey, let's, hey. let's go Yeah, away. let's just go, let's go and tonight. And in the meantime, so. we bother you, but that's no, okay. No, it's okay, no. it's okay. <laughs> if they enjoy the beers yeah. here in Hoodle Town, so, so good. should you. Yeah. We'd like to thank Eric and Terry for joining us today, the Kinsey's of Hoodle Town Brewing Company. And uh, thank you for your time. It was really, really nice, and you got some great beers and a beautiful establishment, a lot to be proud of. Oh, thank thank you. you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on this episode of O Brew. We'd also like to thank everybody here at the Hoodle Town Brewing Company in Dover, Ohio. And make sure you catch more episodes of O Brew.